Hey YouTube, welcome. If you're new to the channel, I'm building the world's only full-size, fully functional, high-performance recumbent motorcycle for production designed from the ground up to take full advantage of this amazing platform's potential. I'm building jigs and fixtures along the way to prepare this for volume production where I'll support multiple engine platforms and power sources. With all this, I'm launching a faster, smarter, safer motorcycle platform with the flagship vehicle aesthetically inspired by the coolest motorcycle in cinematic history, Kaneda's ride from Akira. If you like the project, hit that subscribe button to follow along with the prototype build and the manufacturing adventure and become a patron today. If you already know my project, well, welcome back Akira Bike Project fans. I am sorry for the delay. It's been about six months since my last video. Had a few personal things going on, but I've still been working hard on the project the whole time and making great progress. I just deprioritize videos a bit, but I have a bunch of new ones coming up and this thing should be rolling around this year. So let's get on to the update. We left off the last video building and assembling the rear hub. Next up, I would make and mount the exhaust down tubes and mufflers. The exhaust assembly is rather simple, a down tube from the piston head that swoops backwards into the muffler. I love the look of these transverse V-twins with the exhaust sweeping forward then swinging back on both sides. It looks like I can just make this from a 90 degree bend and a 180 degree bend. I bought some stock regular steel pipes and marked them in preparation. They'll need these exhaust header ends and I got these from Choice City Moto and used them some tape and a sharpie to mark approximately where I should cut these tubes. Luckily I remembered that one of the heads is set back a few inches and remembered that right before cutting. And then I went ahead and cut these in the horizontal bandsaw. And then I welded them to the exhaust header ends. This was just a quick tack weld for now, in case this isn't right and needs to be modified. And let's do a fit test on the bike. And I think it looks great. Fits well, has clearance but not too much. Curves out to the width of the frame and has room to curve backwards. Next I will need to mount the mufflers to the frame so I could properly line up the pipe that connects the muffler to the downpipe. These would simply be 1 inch wide flat bar that is 1 8 inch thick hanging slightly down off the frame and sticking slightly out. To start with, I cut some 1 inch flat bar stock to a pair of equal length pieces. I then marked these pieces with the outline of the mounting slots where the muffler would bolt to them. And then milled these slots out on my milling machine with a 3 8 inch end mill. The result came out pretty good after milling the four slots. These would next each have a small outward bend to hold the muffler about an inch off the frame. I did these by hand with sheet metal benders. Again, came out looking good. These brackets would also hang about an inch below the frame as well, so they would need these small vertical pieces. I marked these out and drilled the mounting bolt holes. And then cut and shaped the ends of these with my new to me tool, a used hardcore high power belt sander and these would fit on the end of the brackets like this. I then welded one to each end of each bracket. The muffler mount brackets fit onto the back of the mufflers like this, bolted through these small slots. Fit testing against the frame looks pretty good. These were chromed mufflers that have been around for a while and had some corrosion on them. A good tip I found online was to use oven cleaner and fine steel wool and actually it worked great. These things look almost as good as the original surface finish. With the brackets made and fit test looking good, I'll go ahead and drill the holes for the mounting of the mufflers to the frame. I first marked the position on the frame and then clamp a drill guide on to make sure the holes are straight through the frame tube. And time for another fit test. I bolt the bracket onto the frame. Looks good. And I'll go ahead and do the front bolt as well. It's surprising the amount of force required here. You can see my whole thousand pound frame jig table move. 
I do these kinds of holes in my drill press whenever possible, but I don't want to disassemble everything just for two holes. And bolting on the front now, and again, that came out pretty good. I'm really liking the look here so far. The bottom part of the exhaust connecting the down tube to the muffler was easy to line up. I marked it and cut it with the angle grinder because of the odd angle and curved pipe it couldn't be cut in the horizontal bandsaw. The other side of the pipe though which was just straight and too long could certainly be cut in the bandsaw. I bolted the down pipe to the head. This is the left side now which has already now been mounted to the frame. And I lined up the bottom half of the pipe I just cut to the down pipe and then tack welded them together. The stock CX500 exhaust flange did not fit in on the left side, so I milled off the fins of the flange. And to make sure both sides match, I did the same thing on the right side, making this small mounting fixture for them. However, another problem came up. Okay, I'm doing the exhaust on the left side, and you can see right here there's not quite enough room. This uh, flange hits the frame here. That's because I didn't do super accurate 3D models of those particular parts. I tried to give enough room for what I thought it would need, uh, but it obviously wasn't enough. Uh, I am probably going to be custom making specific flanges um, out of 3D CNC later, but for now I'm just going to shave off that part of that on my milling machine. But my mounting fixture wouldn't be at the correct angle, so I modified it so I could clamp it to a rotary table by just milling large grooves in on either side. I move this over to the rotary table and clamp it down and rotate it to the correct angled position so that the mill cuts off the side of the flange that was too close to the frame. And I didn't get a great after pick, but it does fit quite nicely now, though I think I'll take a curve out of the little vertical frame piece next to the flange, just to give it plenty of space for engine vibration and engine rotation from torque. And with that, the initial exhaust fabrication is done. Of course, it's only tack welded right now, but I think it came out great. It's simple, but elegant. I really like the symmetry of the design as well. I like the bilateral symmetry that comes from these transverse V-twins, and I'll probably end up getting these pipes Cerakoted, but we'll see. In some quick shop updates, I mentioned that new belt sander. I've been looking for a high power belt sander for a couple years now, and was considering making one but a local metal workers mailing list had one up for sale that was a tough looking World War II era belt sander. And the owner updated it with a VFD controller. This thing is cast iron and massive and we loaded it with his forklift. I wired it up with 220 and it's a beast and I love it. The belt sander had a very small working table though, so I wanted to expand that and add some reference holes so I could more quickly grind very accurate angles. So I designed a plate that uses the same fixturing that welding tables can use, and a system to clamp that to the existing table using a bolt through cams type setup. This was my first foray into doing an intricate design with laser cut steel. But first I milled a slot into the table for the miter to slide around in. The clamps though were the intricate parts, each made up of a pair that made the base and a pair that made the cam, both welded together in parallel with these small cross blocks with grooves. The table's underside had a threaded hole and by screwing a bolt through the cross blocks, the clamps would clamp down hard to the lip of the existing table. This worked perfectly on my first attempt and would give me confidence to use intricate laser cut designs for bike parts in the future. I also built another workbench for this same area, and I'm going to move my belting, grinding, sanding to this area generally. And the new workbench got a drawer as well. Well, that is it for this update. I'd like to thank again my patrons for the incredible support they continue to give. It means a lot and seriously helps expedite the progress of this project. If you like this project, please join as a patron. 
I'll leave you with one of the latest 3D renderings of the design, and I'll hope to see you again soon.